we're focusing on general education, we're focusing on growth. Our story, our proposition still remains. We want to secure a significant position in the energy storage market as a capital growth proposition. Bush for Minerals, AIM listed, uh, integrated, a primary vanadium company uh, with a, a fairly clear strategy that we want to be our, uh, leading our significant uh, low cost primary uh, vanadium platform that's integrated downstream into the very exciting energy storage market. Our primary vanadium production, which combines three 550 million ton resource of high-grade vanadium uh, deposits, which is the largest high-grade primary vanadium uh, resource base of anybody are in the world. Vancam is the only other remaining primary vanadium plant that existed in South Africa. Um, so between that plant and Vemetco, we have two of the three primary vanadium plants in South Africa, or two of the four operating primary vanadium plants in the world. At Vemetco, we produce what we call MV ore before we convert it into nitro van. Uh, and MV ore is a bit of a mix uh, of you know vanadium, pentoxide, some trioxide, and the ability to produce a pentoxide product and a trioxide product is actually quite valuable. And then it's got two conversion facilities for ferrovanadium, uh, which will allow us to convert either pentoxide or trioxide into uh, ferrovanadium. Um, and uh, the fact that it's got three kilns means also that you've got a lot of flexibility in the way you run that plant. At Vermetco, if we shut down the kiln, um, that means that we stop roasting, right, uh, yeah. while we're doing that. The, the news here, the good news here with Vancom is that I can stop one kiln for maintenance and I can have two kilns that are still running at full full throttle. Mm. Um, and, and you know what, the ability to scale up and down your production also in response to where exactly the market is in, in the short term is quite, quite positive. Between the two, on the back of a refurbishment program and the expansion, uh, CapEx at Vancometco, we will be in a position to produce 8,400 tons of energy. And as I indicated earlier on, that's more than treble of what we produced last year. Mm. So between the resource space we have, and by the way, even producing at 8,400, we, we, we still are not consuming over life, excuse me, over the life of mine, we're still not consuming even a quarter of the resource space that we have. With the large resource space, with the processing capacity that we have, we think we are in a very strong position to, um, one, uh, supply on a low-cost basis into the steel industry with a broad range of products, as we indicated, uh, to produce vanadium chemicals as well. And we also be very proactive as a company to unlock that market opportunity. Mm. When we are successful to do that, we want to make sure that the security of supply of vanadium into that space is not in question. With Vancam and Vermetco, and our resource base, we now are well positioned to really drive up our production, uh, low cost production base, and we really have a solid platform to then do uh, the kind of work that we are looking at in the energy storage market. In the short term, I think we all know that there's been some uh, downward movements in the vanadium prices. Uh, we saw in that an opportunity in our view uh to have a conversation with the sellers uh around how we possibly restructure that transaction uh and we're very grateful that uh, you know they were i think pragmatic and realistic in uh, in, in agreeing to that so the 52.5 million dollars was the revised transaction uh, consideration um which is payable with 30 million dollars which you paid now and uh 23.5 million dollars is in effect a deferred consideration uh, in the form of a convertible bond, uh, which uh, has got a two-year uh, term. I personally do believe that um, the, uh, the sellers of Vancam uh, would be very well served to convert into Bushfold shares and hold uh, and participate in the growth of the company. And, and I do believe that as we execute our strategy, indeed, that uh, uh, that proposition uh, will only become that much more attractive and um, I think there's a fairly good chance that they may well you know consider to take it up um, and if they do let's keep in mind that it's the uh, we're talking about um, they are a very credible party that has been quite active in the vanadium market I wouldn't have a problem at all having them on the register of visual minerals I think that would be a positive thing what we see as besides the supply of the vanadium 
you know, the other obstacle that most of these companies have outside of maybe a Sumitomo, uh, which is kind of large enough to support itself, is they need scale, right? And it becomes a chicken or the egg. You know, to get scale, you need to have orders. To have orders, you need to get your costs down. You get costs down with economies of scale, right? And, and one of the things that we liked in the specific transaction of, uh, of Avalon Battery and Red Tea is a merger, right? It's two companies looking completely different markets, um, having different sets of skill sets, um, the ability to maybe create, have some synergies on the cost side, on the R&D side, but, but you know, you combine their pipelines and all of a sudden, you know, you, you've got a lot more scale. You get to that, 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 that economy faster and it's not you have to wait two years, you, you get there in one year, for example, or instead of four years, you get there in two years, it needs less capital to get there, so it's a less risky investment. We think that's very good for the industry. That's why we like that transaction. Fortune favors the brave when it works, but when it doesn't work, you know, you've got you, you know, that's when people do look back and go, that that was that wasn't such a smart move. Let's argue that we were proved wrong for a second, and uh, the market didn't take off, uh, notwithstanding all the work that's gone into it and the research that went into it being, uh, being a real opportunity. We still have a large resource base. We still have a large processing infrastructure, which will only get lower in terms of its cost of production and therefore competitive supplying vanadium, even if all that we ended up doing was supplying that vanadium into the steel sector. Right. So, so the, what? How big is this downside? Right. And then we think it's very, very limited. The upside, on the other hand, is 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 enormous and i think the other part so part of it is it's less it requires a whole lot less capital than what we're doing on the upstream the other is the ability to source external capital for clean energy projects yes for clean energy products for you know sustainability and and, and the circular economy that money is out there some of it is actually discretionary financing where it's actually cheaper than what you could ever get if you were trying to borrow money to, to build a mine and and a much favorable terms so we, we don't have to rely on our balance sheet as far as we would have to for, for, the, for the mining and processing. Yes, there's some de-risking that we have to do, but that's, that's again, it's, it's early, only early stages. The ability to scale up, the, the capital is there. It's just, it's just looking for, um, for investable opportunities, and that's what we're providing. When we started talking about it, and we started you know, putting some resources towards it, um, each time you have to face some level of skepticism, it's a blessing because it, it makes you rethink your assumptions, revisit your assumptions and say, we're just drinking our own Kool-Aid. And I think every single time we've done it, we've got even more conviction that it's absolutely the right time for this and that the opportunity is that real.